Hello, and welcome to Real Reviews. My name is Jameson Rabbit, and today I'm joined by a man who prefers black licorice to red licorice, and his name is Mike Roth. All right, I'll stand up to anything that's a blatant lie. No one prefers black licorice ever. I don't know how it still is on that sale That is today. why you are the outlier. Uh, what? No. <laughs> always, always chewing on I licorice. give away black licorice on um, Christmas. You're a hateful Easter. person. Yeah, yeah, out of that reason. Wow. <laughs> I am angry. I Just, am crumpus. You are evil. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, this week we have, I think this week I am going to go on a limb and say is my favorite uh, week at the movies that we've had all year long. As oh, far yeah. as top to bottom yeah. movies. All around good. It was. Not a stinker in the bunch. That's Thank you, a, Hollywood. That's a spoiler, but um, I'm, exci- I'm really excited to, uh, to talk about these movies, so mm-hmm. let's waste no time. Uh, the first movie on the marquee this week is called The Walk. Mm. Uh, the Walk is based off of the memoir of uh, Philippe Petit, as well as uh, based on the 2008 documentary uh, called Man on Wire. And what it is, is Philippe Petit is a Frenchman who is a wire walker. He, he is a performer. And uh, he, he uh, gets drawn by the lure of these soon-to-be-completed World Trade Center towers in New York. He must hang his wire across those towers and walk. He just has to. It, it, he has to. It is an obsession. And so this film is more or less that story. Mm-hmm. The planning of it, the execution of it, as Philippe gets up on that wire, 110 stories in the air, and walks across. It was the tallest structure, um, man-made structure right. at the time. So, right. yeah, that's uh, that's enough to pee yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and so this movie is brought to us by uh, director uh, Robert Zemeckis and stars Joseph Gordon-Levitt as Philippe. And uh, it's it's basically that story. We meet him in, in France, and uh, he learns he learns the art of wire walking from Papa Rudy, played by Sir Ben Kingsley. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and meets up with this Annie, who's another artist, uh, played by Charlotte Le Bon, and the obsession begins, and it's basically a, a heist movie for the majority of it, yeah. is them planning the heist, getting together a group of conspirators, mm-hmm. and uh, figuring out how they're going to make it happen, and ultimately, the, the, of course, what you're there to see, is he going to get out on the wire, is he going to fall? Yeah. And since it's uh, based on a true story, you can find this one out on yeah. your own. But <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and the, the thing is, is there's, there's so much in this movie that doesn't even seem like it could really be happening. Yeah. Like, there's no way. But it is because we have the documentary to go back to and see the actual footage of it. I, actually, one of the things that I could not believe was the character, um, uh, Philippe. Yeah. I really thought that uh, uh, Joseph, uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt... Um, over dramatize this <laughs> sure. person, and I really I did not like Philippe as a character. Mm-hmm. I thought he was just overdone. And then I found out in real life, yeah, not so much. The real man plays his character worse. <laughs> yeah, Joseph Levitt played a subdued version of Philippe Petit. Yeah. If you watch the documentary, Philippe is he is oh super excited about everything he's talking about, and very animated and over the top and crazy, cheesy. And yeah. he is, and he's he is. Passionate. You can mm-hmm. tell there's a reason he was driven to do what he did, and there was a reason that people were total strangers were talked into doing this with him. Yeah, he just talked to a stranger. Hey, help me do something super illegal, and you might watch me die. And the crazy and thing. And let's do it. And I thought it was really crazy. Is this person is. Uh, the only problem I had with the movie was this person's personality is something I would find extremely <laughs> grating. Yes. He's extremely dramatic. He's extremely self-centered. Very much. He does not say please. He does not thank you. If you disagree with him, you are dead to him. The, right. the carrots are cooked. He's We're done. What we call very French. Yeah. Well, <laughs> That's, uh, I think I've, I've seen other French personalities uh-huh. and... I don't want to hit French people. This guy, I, I just know. wanted to be like, my God, these guys are helping you. Stop being, uh, but anyhow. Having spent some time in Paris, he seemed very French to me. Oh, really? <laughs> a little bit of a jerk. Sorry, French people. Um, but Not the, Canadian look, French. You guys no, no, are no, cool. No, no. You guys are awesome. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but the big draw for the walk is the 3D. Mm-hmm. That is the biggest thing because the story is, the story is shot and told very much like the documentary. Mm-hmm. It is narrated by Philippe throughout. Um, as, and once he gets out onto the wire, it's completely told through his narration. Yeah. Him telling what happened. So what separates this movie from just watching the documentary and the true events? It's the opportunity to actually get on the wire, right? That's, mm-hmm. what, you're, that's what you're paying to see. Yeah. I, I would say um, 
it, I mean, the 3D is fantastic. This is the best 3D you will see. Yes. It um, is the best 3D movie I've ever witnessed. Yeah. I, they use 3D to tell the story. To it, it shaped the story. Up until now, I would say the, uh, even though I did not like the Amazing Spider-Man movies, the newest ones, those took the cake for the best looking 3D. This, um... This surpasses it by so much you don't even. But want I mean, to think you about have it. to with this movie, yeah. Because that's the whole draw for the movie is, yeah. is well, we're gonna get out there 110 stories up in the air. And Darius Wolski, the cinematographer, did an amazing job. This yeah. was a beautifully shot well, movie throughout. Yeah, e even without the 3D, right. if you had like a 4K television or something like that, I think it, you definitely want to see this in a the theater. Yes. But some of these shots are so crisp and so clear, shot so well. Um, I, I was mentioning to you earlier about. I was just fascinated when they took that camera and they would go down the wire and just the natural curls of the wire just seemed beautiful and artistic. And it wasn't just that. It was also the use of color and yeah. their shots. It is it is a piece of art to look at this movie. Yeah, yeah. the scale and the scope of this movie, when you get to look at these towers mm -hmm. up close, and I mean, there's that shot you see in the trailer as he just puts his chin on the... On the Tower just looks up. At, you see the scale of what it is. And when you get up there, he's walking in the clouds. And when you finally, throughout everything, the heist, the, I mean, the, the craziness that happens is they're trying to just get this rigged. I found myself, I'm watching the movie, and I found myself, like, why are my hands hurting? Because they're digging into the armrest. Yeah, I actually found... I know the story. I've seen the documentary a half dozen times. Mm -hmm. I know, but I'm still like, oh, man, you're going to fall. I, there was times <laughs> where I did grab an imaginary person next to me, and I just grabbed onto the seat because <laughs> the sense of vertigo and uh, the... The dread, yes. the doom. It's so I great. don't do this. I don't do this in horror movies. I don't scream in horror movies. I grabbed an imaginary person's yeah. leg. Hang on, buddy. Ah! We're gonna get I, through this. I, I, it was a. Uh, it was terrifying. Um, I also loved how they shot the twin towers. Twin towers, I, and a lot of people differ from me now. Are kind of ugly towers. They mm. were just two shoe boxes in the air. But this movie shot him in a way where you saw like the nuance, and you got, yeah. and that was also part of the what this movie was about was putting love into right. something that we actually don't have anymore. Well, and that's, it, yeah. to show the New Yorkers actually go, you know what? This wasn't part of our family. These weren't our buildings. These were ugly monstrosities. But once he did this, now it has heart. Now it's a yeah. New York. I mean, it, it had to be addressed in this movie. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they, Zemeckis, I think, did a really great job of, of. Not hitting the issue of, you know, we're showing the Twin Towers. They yeah. represent something different now than they did in 1974. Mm -hmm. And so they, they, it is an image that you go, you're instantly reminded of a tragedy. Yeah. And he, he plays that very nicely. It's mm -hmm. not heavy handed. There's no. some, it, it's, uh, it, it's great. They are a character. And I think it's beautiful. The last shot, uh, you see the towers as the sun sets on them. And it's, it's a nice tribute to them mm -hmm. throughout this movie. But there, it's not. Heavy-handed, like yeah, and then the tower. You know, I mean, it's. It, I, I think Zemeckis did a great job. I like the, and it's been in every single advertisement. The going up the wall, yeah, yeah. and really, it's, it's like a shoebox. But oh. um, they show just enough bend mm. of the metal, and you're like, oh well, gosh, I guess that was really pretty. They I, made it look pretty. I think this is a movie that you must see on the big screen yeah. in 3D. Please I, do. I, I really enjoy this movie, but I I don't know how it holds up. When you take it home and you put it on your TV and you don't have the 3D, and yeah. at that point, it's basically just the story. And if you're watching for just the story, I would recommend watching Man on Wire instead yeah. because it, it develops the secondary characters more. The secondary characters, the conspirators in this movie, are kind of just there. My, I, I do give a point and even maybe even more in my mind just for looking at this. And if you don't see this at the theater, you are missing out. Yeah. Please go see it. Go see it at the theater. <laughs> Not many people have right no. now. It is being uh, decimated at the box and, office, and but you, I recommend it. And you will lose your chance. Eventually, yeah. it's going to be out of the theater. If you have a really nice 4K TV that's 3D and stuff, it still probably won't do yeah. the justice go of see seeing it, it at go the see theater. It. So ultimately, what did you give the walk for a score? I gave it a four. Right? Right. And that is... Uh, mostly on the fact that this movie is so beautiful to yeah. look at. It, I, like I said, I, I'm acting like I'm on a roller coaster, mm -hmm. and I don't do that. I'm, I'm too old to yeah. freak out about something when I'm not moving.
<laughs> um, I gave it. I gave it four and a half stars. I thought it was excellent. Like I said, the best 3D movie I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. um, I highly recommend you have to go see it in the theater. Um, and if you enjoy the story or are interested at all, I highly recommend watching Man on Wire, which is streaming on Netflix right now. This, the, it's actually a better story than this. The story yeah. is better in I, real I, life than it is I, in the movie. It's I don't crazy. know if I could handle Philip. Oh man, he's excellent. He's excellent. <laughs> Even more intense. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, the next movie we have on the marquee, sir. What do you have? Oh, we have Cesario. Mm -hmm. um, we have a story. Story where uh, Emily Blunt plays this kind of uh, really into her job, uh, but kind of fresh um, FBI agent. She goes through a terrible, traumatic, horrific event while doing a raid in southern Arizona. That's pretty much what you see first when you're watching the advertisement. Um, after this, uh, of course, she wants to get at the bad guys and end a curtail in this man um, played by Josh Brolin. Um, he's going to help her. You don't really know what he is. He's just a sandal-wearing kind of old hippie that happens work. to... Doing know, a lot of gum work. Just doing a lot of gum work. <laughs> and uh, he needs a little partner, and he sees potential in uh, Kate Macer. Um, they also have a third wheel, which is not really a third wheel. He's actually... a fantastic part of the story uh, Alejandro played by Benicio Del Toro um, fantastic acting on his part actually fantastic acting all around. with all around um, they end up uh, going back and forth over the border trying to uh, get leads stir up trouble and find the cartel this is a mixture of um, crime and horror there is some horrific images and even the, the score has a horror score, but overall it is a, a crime drama. And um, I really don't want to tell you anything more about it. It, it is one of those things where there is twists and turns. I mean, turns. If, you, if you're watching it, you see the trailer. You see there's a lot of yeah. crazy imagery going but on. But you don't know what's going on. You just know that no, it's You don't know what's intense. going on throughout the movie, though. Uh, it, the I, first half. I mean, <laughs> that's a, that's, that's a, one of the things that I enjoy about the movie is that mm -hmm. it is a slow burn. It yeah. is methodically paced. Mm -hmm. You are finding out everything that's going on right alongside Emily Blunt's character. It's not yeah. like you see something and she's still got to figure it out. You're figuring it out with her. Yeah. Like, I don't, you, for a large chunk of the movie, you don't know who these people are. No. You don't know why she's so special that she yeah. was chosen for this thing. You don't, you don't even know, know what what's going on. No. And that's actually... Who's the good guy? <laughs> who's the bad guy? Who to trust? And there's there's a great quote I actually, I actually had to write down because Josh Brolin at one point tells her, he says, look, nothing will make sense and you will doubt what we do. Mm -hmm. And that's true. Through the whole movie going, no, this makes sense. I don't yeah. even know if this guy is good or bad. Actually, is this a double turn coming? To me, that hurt the beginning of the film. I thought the film in the beginning, when I did not know what was going on, was mostly about just these kind of horrific, almost gothic, like uh, morbid scenes mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. Mexican cartel. And if you have ever you know, watched anything about the news. It is horrific. They're not nice. Yeah, um, I, I'm like, a few years ago, I heard about uh, 40 beheadings just because. You know, it's, uh, it's mm. things like that. I don't like that. No, it's not a pleasant we situation. We don't endorse that here at Real Reviews. <laughs> at Real Reviews, we do <laughs> not <laughs> endorse the Mexican drug cartels. Now, Benicio Del Toro. Yeah. That guy shows up in the movie. Yeah. He walks onto a plane, and immediately there's this presence about him. Yeah. There is a cool creepiness to him mm -hmm. and it just he carries it through the whole movie right away it just adds to the confusion yeah. because you, like wait who's this yeah, guy now you have emily what's... blunt and josh brolin in a private plane going somewhere where <laughs> and then this guy just walks in like, <laughs> like what's, what's hey this guy i'm part of this yeah well, really is he like what, where did you come it, from yeah and that's her whole confusion too uh-huh um my only real drawback for this movie is i love emily blunt i love her but mm -hmm. her character in this movie was nothing new. She was, she was the ambitious young, do it by the book agent. She was Clarice Starling. She mm -hmm. was many other characters that I've seen before. Uh, Training Day. I mean, the same thing. Like, oh no, I want to do it by the book. Why we got to go get it? Blah blah. It's like I wanted to see more angles of her character as I was seeing more angles of the entire situation develop. It felt like her character never changed. And I understand that she's supposed to be the one good true north in the mm -hmm. story as good and bad, right and wrong are kind of mixed matched around, but I, it, I felt like she was kind of too naive. I think in this one, um, this movie, he actually kind of needed that because you had your other two that were just wild cards and you needed one person that you could actually count on as I know this person to just kind of anchor it in. Yeah. And 
as far as Emily Blunt doing the same character she always does, I think she excelled in this as being the same character as she's always been. <laughs> there's she's, a oh, scene she's where great. she's under the gun, and there's these long dramatic pauses where you could look on her face and you could see, like, emotions just pass by and thoughts without words. And and that I was, was just that was a lot of this movie was that because it was just methodical. Yeah, it, there was not a there's not a ton of action. And there's Intense action here, mm-hmm. intense action there. Uh, intense imagery. Right. Um, there was a scene where they were um, going through a, a drug tunnel. That That's pretty much where I was hooked in just loving this film. Um, I felt claustrophobic. They brought in a strong horror score oh. to make me that feel... That driving bass string as the tension started to build and mm. develop, that, that bass just Things going Things getting dark so and grainy, good. but at that point, I was not confused. I knew where we are going. Yeah. They weren't just shaking around the camera like most modern movies do. They gave you a, a sense of claustrophobia and dread that good storytelling can do, yeah. and not just knocking around the camera yeah. like everybody else exactly. likes to do lately. Yeah, it was an enjoyable movie. A Cesario, I, I recommend an, another movie recommend this weekend. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. Yeah, I yeah. gave it the same. I yeah. think it's very appropriate. And again, go see this movie. It's yeah. uh, not too many people are going to it, and it will leave the theaters. Yeah, there's a lot of Please movies coming out in the next couple of weeks as yeah. the big Oscar buzz put movies start to really come into full push. Yeah, um, a lot of these other movies are going to get pushed out very quickly. So we highly recommend going check it out. Cesario as well. Maybe we should talk about the movie everyone went to see. <laughs> yeah, the big movie uh, of the weekend was The Martian uh, from director Ridley Scott. Uh, the Martian is, uh, I don't even know where to start with it. It's a Mars mission. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have sent our Ares 3 team up to Mars to collect soil samples and do some scientific data. And a big storm comes washing over them. Uh, they have to ev- evacuate immediately. Uh, and uh, Mark Watney, the botanist on the crew, mm-hmm. gets assumed dead. He gets hit with a rock uh, or a, a, an antenna. Mm-hmm. All life signs are gone on his suit. They can't mm-hmm. see him in the storm. They need to get out of there before they're all dead. Yeah. So they make the decision. Jessica Chastain is the, the commander. She makes the decision. We leave him. He's mm-hmm. dead. We can't all die for him. That's yeah. a Spock decision. No, that's and she, very... And yeah. she takes off. And then we find out Mark Watney, not so dead. No. Maybe he made it. And so Matt Damon, playing Mark Watney, uh, has to... He is the Martian, uh, as he has to figure out how to live on Mars by himself with whatever he can scrounge together and he has no way of communicating with anybody. He has no way of doing really anything. He just has to deal with what he has right there. Uh, he's injured. They, nobody knows that he's alive for the longest time. Uh, eventually he makes contact with NASA mm-hmm. and they, they have to make the decision, what do we do? We got, to get the, we got this guy. And the one thing I like about this movie is they don't make it seem like, oh, we just go and get him. Mm-hmm. Oh, we've got so we can just go get him. It, mm-hmm. It's gonna be a few years, dude. Yeah. It's gonna be a few years before we can do anything. It is very realistic. And Mark in Watney, that way. he knows this. He's yeah. I mean, before he even contacts anybody, he's like, Oh, I, I have no way to contact him. And if I could today, it's what, still gonna be what am three I gonna years do? minimum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so the 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 Film is an all-star cast. Uh, run down some names real quick. We have, of course, Matt Damon, Jessica Chastain, Kristen Wiig uh, as the PR person for NASA. Mm-hmm. We have Jeff Daniels as uh, the head of NASA. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, Michael Pena as one of the crew members. Uh, Kate Mara, mm-hmm. another one of the crew members. Uh, we have... This is not a Marvel. Sebastian Stan, <laughs> otherwise known as Bucky. He is another crew member. Uh, Chiwetel... I can't. I can't do this name. Chuito Ojafor as uh, the science, uh, the, the head of the science division, I guess, for NASA, mm-hmm. trying to figure out how to keep him alive. Uh, you have Donald Glover. You have Sean Bean as the mission commander mm-hmm. there on Earth, uh, and it's just this whole cast of characters figuring out how to keep Mark Watney alive. Mm-hmm. For a majority of the movie, it is Castaway. It is Mark Watney talking into a camera. Yeah. His video diary, basically, letting you know what's going on. As on Earth, they are scrambling to figure out what to do. Mm-hmm. And it's, I, I think they did a really great job with it. Your thoughts, sir? My thoughts? Um, I, again, I, I thought this movie was really good. But 
I have one complaint, and, and I know it sounds really nitpicky, it sounds really nerdy of me, but the difference between sci-fi and sci-fi fantasy, most of the sci-fi you see is sci-fi fantasy. You can make up anything you want and everybody goes with it, like uh, John Carter, right, you know. Right. It, a movie like this, and they only do one a year, they put in a lot of science, but when they don't put in something that sciencey, that really throws me off. Um, it, a lot of it has to do with the atmosphere. This whole movie kind of revolved around the atmosphere of Mars and yeah. how to survive on that. And at, sometimes, like during the storms, you know, the atmosphere is so thick it can throw rocks and move over equipment and stuff. And then at the other ends, it's so thin it you don't need re wind resistant things on your rockets. So that's that's an issue. Well, it's not just that, but it's also uh, how it's played throughout the whole thing. It's like it, then the atmosphere seems very similar to our own atmosphere because it only takes some duct tape and plastic in order to keep that pressure difference. And then there's other times where he's talking about how he'll implode if he uh, gets uh, outside of this bubble because the atmosphere's too thin, which is not what you do if you're in a thin atmosphere. You explode. You don't implode. And it's very nitpicky, but then he goes into the radiation problem where he's throwing nuclear waste in his rig right. so he could keep warm. Yeah. It's like, just keep on the suit. That's It keeps you warm. Why do you want to die a horrible, toxic now, death? Now, my <laughs> rebuttal to that is I am not a scientist, but I have gone on multiple websites uh -huh. since watching the movie, and to a man, every person that I've read, people that are literally rocket scientists, uh -huh say the science in this movie is strong. The science in this movie is legit. Uh -huh. The things that you would, ha you would have complaints about uh -huh. in, say, the third act of this movie and, and how things happen, that would 100%, they think, would work. I so uh, th that is one of the things I think is the strongest part of this movie is that it's, it's realistic science fiction, that they didn't talk down to you like, and then the rocket goes in the air and you go like this, but they didn't overly jargonize it to make it just gobbledygook. So, it, it, it felt real to me. It, it didn't feel like they were speaking down. It felt realistic. And then when I go and actually talk to people uh -huh. who know or read what uh, people that know, they go, yeah, no, that's it. Well, I, there was some things that were very scientifically accurate, like the launching of mm -hmm. the... Um, the ship. It doesn't need a cone and stuff like that yeah. because the air is so thin. Right. But they'll also say, well, yeah, that beginning part, you know, you'll get a strong dust storm. You'll get dust in your suit. There might be abrasions, but it literally feels like a light breeze here on Earth. You're not going to be knocked around. Your equipment's not going to fall over. Okay. It could get abrasions. Really bad ones. Could you get an antenna to the stomach? Um, yeah. Um, that would if hurt. something blew up, yeah. That, would hurt. that could happen. I I I loved so much about this movie. Uh, the the comedy in this movie I thought was strong. Mm -hmm. Great comedy played up well. Um, my biggest love for this movie though is the emotion and how invested that I got in Mark Watney yeah. in the mission when there were setbacks. There's a there's a uh, there's a moment where he has a setback with his potato crop. Mm -hmm. There's a major setback that comes in. Yeah, and I literally felt my heart sink. Like oh no. No, there's a there's a several setbacks as there should be. It's not just like we got this special ship that'll come up and get you, Mark. Don't worry. And <laughs> and, and there's I felt myself so invested in everything that was going on because it felt real. Mm -hmm. It didn't feel like a fantasy sci-fi movie at all. It felt like I was watching something that was happening. I, I I thought it was Ridley Scott's. It was fabulous direction on his part and amazing acting throughout by the cast. I don't think there was a weak link in the cast. And there's some people in this, in this cast that I don't care for. Yeah. Um, and that was the other thing and that I was a little different is I really didn't like the character of Mark Watney at all. Wow. Yeah. I, I, so you hated this movie. I didn't hate this movie. What I did love what about this What did you like about what Mark I, Watney? Um, he was uh, oh, just seemed too cocky and he made some weird decisions and part of the unscientific thing like he's like oh I can't make another crop because I have no more bacteria he makes bacteria every time he goes through the food I mean okay but can, couldn't he try to start that over again I mean do you want to sit him just you want to sit and watch him just continually try and make bacteria for the for the whole no, two hours but I, want to, I mean is that what you want to see but I, I, I want him to say something besides all oh, the bacteria and the whole world's dead because it, it wasn't True. All right. We're going to need to see Michael's, first off, uh, science degree at the end of this show. <laughs> All, right. We, All right. We can look up the individual parts, but anyhow. No, no. Let's, let's go uh, ahead. The, the, wait, the one I, th yes, go ahead. I, I am yes. going to say what I do like, yes. because I did not hate this movie. There was a lot of intense moments. Um, 
the scenery of Mars was beautiful. No. Um, I'm sure wherever they shot that, they probably... Somewhere in Utah. <laughs> somewhere in Utah, there were probably uh, people going, oh, man, I can't go out there and look at that because of that crew down there. But um, nope. <laughs> um, it is a beautiful movie. There is a lot of action, and there is a lot of scientifically scientifically accurate things in the movie. It's just when they go unaccurate, it just shines a beacon for me. Okay. And uh, and it upset me enough where I actually went online for an hour, and I went, okay, is this true? All right, I'm right about that. Oh, okay, I'm wrong about hey, that. If it's I'm good enough for Neil deGrasse Tyson, <laughs> it's good enough for me. If he says thumbs up on it, I say thumbs up because he is way smarter than you and I combined. I'm thinking if only if Hollywood only makes one movie that has... That's not what they do, though. They make uh, multiple these every year. Well, not like this. No. Really, Scott only makes one at a time. I liked that there wasn't a bad guy in the movie. That was no. my one thing because they tend to do that. Like, mm-hmm. oh, we'll just make... Jeff Daniels would have, would have been the, the perfect bad guy. The government stooge. Oh, you know, he's just trying to he'll, he's trying to save a buck. Or they, that's how they would spin it normally. Mm-hmm. There's got to be somebody down on Earth that's got a hidden agenda, yeah. right, or something. And I like that it wasn't. You know, like, we need to find ways of doing this. We need to, I, I enjoyed that. There didn't have to be a bad guy. We have enough bad guys with this whole element trying to kill Mark Watney. Mars was kind of a jerk. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a bad guy enough right there. Yeah. So ultimately, what did you give the Martian? And I can't wait to hear it. It is a 3.5, which is a better than average score by a couple of digits, half right. digits. I- I'm saying it, it was a good movie, but I don't think it was a holy grail of science. All right. I give the Martian five stars. Woo! Martian is a phenomenal <laughs> movie, and I believe it is in the top three best movies that Ridley Scott has ever made. And wow. uh, it's definitely the best movie Ridley Scott has made in at least the last decade. It is phenomenal. And uh, highly recommend. You don't shovel out those fives. Nope, I sure don't. I've given three this year. This wow. would be number four. Uh, and I think The Martian is just amazing. And uh, if you haven't seen it, if you are in the minority of America that hasn't seen it, go see it. If you're like me, go see it twice. Wow. Yeah. Well, you saw it 3D and non 3D? Yes. And the, by the way, uh, 3D, I don't recommend. Okay. Non recommend of the 3D. You don't need to. But no. uh, that's just my opinion. Well, it, it's kind of hard. You've seen the walk. So yeah. it's I, like everything. It back to back bad. Nights. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't, didn't quite make that. that but, 3D. Uh, let's move on real quick to our real reviews movie throwback, sir. What do you have for our throwback? Uh, we have Pleasantville. Um, <laughs> Jeff Daniels is yes, also in this. It. But we chose it because it was uh, two people stuck in a place and they can't get out. Yes, um, foreign Ple- place. Pleasantville, you have uh, teenagers from the 90s, David and Jennifer. David played by Toby McGuire and Jennifer playing by Reese Witherspoon. They get thrown mystically back into a television period of a show called Pleasantville. In Pleasantville, everything is pleasant. There mm-hmm. is uh, everybody just plays basketball, they they get the shots every single time, yards are perfect, there's no fires, everything you expect from a late 50s television show, sitcom. They get thrown there, they have to play the characters Bud and Mary Sue. Everybody sees them as Bud and Mary Sue. Thing is, is they're not. They are from 1990, and as their 1990 world spills into this world, things get to change. Uh, it was uh, huge for having uh, some cinematography that just wowed people. Yeah. You have most of the movie is in black and white, but as people are inspired and people change, color starts to come into play. Um, this movie is actually not talked about enough. Um, what do you think about it? I think it's fabulous. I think it's uh, an original concept. Yes. And that's something nice. Yeah. And uh, I think it's a movie that holds up really well. 15, 20 years later, 15 years later, I think it holds up really well. Um, and I think it's a movie that, that needs to be seen. If you enjoy films, mm-hmm. I think it's uh, a spectacular use of, of uh, the black and white versus the color and all that. Yeah. Good story. It's very emotional. It is. It's great. And I love everyone in that cast. Um, I, we, we both recommend checking out Pleasantville. Mm-hmm. Good Blu-ray out there right now. Yes. Yes. Uh, before we go real quick, let's take a look at what is coming out the weekend of October 16th. We have three movies. I'm going to hit them real quick. We have Bridge of Spies, the newest Tom Hanks movie. We also have Crimson Peak, horror movie starring Jessica Chastain, Looking among another host of characters. And Goosebumps, 
based on the horror books, the children's scary books, the same name. Those will all be coming out October 16th. Uh, next week, we will be talking about uh, Pan and the movie 99 Homes. Uh, of course, we would like to thank our sponsor, Marcus Theaters, though. Before we go, thank you to the Palace here in Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. If you want to find any more from us, you can do so on Facebook or Twitter. But until next week, my name is Jameson. I'm Mike Roth. Thanks for watching. You ever feel like...